Hello and welcome to another episode of All Code Sucks, where we take a look at code that is actually running in production and then show you what's wrong with it, as well as some ways to fix it. In this episode, we're going to be dealing with PyTest. Uh, we actually did an episode already that is very similar to this, but this is a, yet another way that you can make your tests accidentally pass when they weren't intended to. I'm going to show you a anonymized example that is very much changed from the real production one uh, to protect the original author. And then we're going to walk you through how you can go about fixing this. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. All right, so I've written a little bit of code ahead of time, mostly so I don't have to tap it all out again. Oops, spoilers. I <laughs> didn't in, in mean to uh, jump ahead here. Uh, and in this code, we have a function. This function is sort of silly. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, you could imagine it doing some sort of computation. Uh, but in particular, it has an error case. If x is less than 0, it intends to raise a value error and say that uh, you know, x, x was supposed to be greater than or equal to zero. However, if it's less than zero, then we have a problem. And we wrote a test for that where uh, we said with pytest.raises exception, it should raise an exception if we pass a negative value in. All right, cool. Everything is great. Uh, this test works and you can imagine this gets shipped to production. Oops, uh, assuming that there's a proper syntax here. This gets shipped to production and everything is fine. Everything is great. The function is perfect. Uh, but then at a later date, someone comes along and a new requirement adds a second parameter to this. Uh, so instead of requiring this to be less than zero, it now says that it must be less than y. And so somebody adds in an error message here and we go to run our test and our test still passes. Uh, but our test is actually not testing this function at all anymore. In fact, what it is testing, if we were to comment this out and replace it with if true, is that, uh, oh, oops, a type error. And that's because exception is the base class for all user space exceptions. So things that aren't keyboard interrupt or system exit or, or things like that. Um, so anything that should be caught and potentially handled tends to derive from exception. And type error is no exception to that. It is a subclass of exception. So in this case, uh, it's not actually testing our value error anymore. It's instead just raising because it's the wrong function shape. And so my general recommendation is to never use exception as your exception type with raises. That will prevent you from falling into this pitfall. Um, I actually have a few sort of rules of thumb when dealing with exceptions and dealing with testing them, and those are here. Uh, the first is, if it's worth raising a custom exception, in this case we're raising value error, uh, we should be testing that custom exception itself. Uh, the other part of this is if it's worth having a custom message, so this custom message here, it's also worth testing that custom message. And if we would have done either of these two things, we would have avoided this mistake here. For instance, if we would have said raises value error, uh, this refactor would have caused it to raise type error out of here and not had the same problem. Um, if we would have instead, exception, we would have instead tested the message here, uh, assert stir xinfo dot x info dot value is equal to, I mean, the message is nonsense here, but <laughs> if we said expected x equals negative 10 greater than or equal to zero as our uh, exception message here, this is probably what it would have been before the refactor. Uh, we would have also seen a um, an error here as well. And, you know, fixing that, we would have got the right thing. Uh, oh, but of course the message would have changed as well. So we would have noticed it in both ways. Um, so if it's worth having a custom message, test it. So basically if you're raising a custom exception or having a custom message, make sure you have a test for that particular type and that particular message. Uh, ideally both at the same time. There are some ways that you can avoid this, just and you know blanket avoid this in your code bases. Uh, some of these fixes don't necessarily apply to every single case where raises exception might be present. Uh, so some of these are just partial solutions. They're not a full solution to this problem. Uh, you could lint for this directly. That would be another way to solve for this. But I think there are other tools that are just as valuable without you know, specifically trying to find this particular error case. Uh, and that is to use the type checker. So for instance, in this case where we, we called this with the wrong shape, Ideally, our type checker would notice, oh, you're missing a parameter here, and so it'd flag this line as a mistake. Uh, use code coverage. So when this uh, switched here, this line was no longer covered. And ideally, if you were using a code coverage tool, it would recognize this line as uncovered. Um, 
using a linter. This won't cover all the cases. Uh, one other case where raises exception could be problematic is if somebody had a name error. So if this function got renamed or imported under a different name, uh, this would also pass the test. This would this would work just fine if we were to um, run pytest on this, even though this is a name error, so it's obviously wrong. Uh, but a linter will helpfully point out that you know, there's an undefined name there. And so you might be able to use a linter to prevent this case. But again, not all these cases can be caught automatically. And so you really have to combine a lot of those to get more confidence that your tests are actually testing things. Um, the other option is to you know, rigorously use test-driven development. So you would write your test first, make sure it fails, and then make, make sure it passes. But of course, there's no way to lint for that. And not everyone is going to subscribe to that approach to writing software. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you found this interesting and I will see you in the next one.